YouTube. In this video, we're going to uh, actually just run through how to use a shortcut formula to find the uh, variance and standard deviation for a given sample of data or even a population of data. And actually, I'm, the first thing we're going to do is actually going to talk about the difference between the two formulas here. But you'll notice that I give two shortcut formulas. But this first set here, it says shortcut for the computational formulas for S squared and S. And so samples, you'll notice that I'm using Roman letters here, S squared and s. Roman letters, that is like the, the alphabet, say, that we use in English. Uh, whereas when I talk about the shortcut formulas for populations, I use sigma squared and sigma. So first things first, recall that when we talk about s squared or sigma squared, these are both variants. Okay, so variants. Uh, and when we talk about uh, s and sigma, we're talking about the standard deviation. Okay, so the standard deviation. So the, the difference between these two, uh, recall, is this. When you talk about a sample, we use Roman letters to indicate this. And where we talk about populations, we typically use Greek letters to indicate this. Okay. Uh, so in terms of are there any other differences between the formulas, well, let's look at the shortcut formulas. For the very first time, you're going to see that the variance formula here, uh, S squared for a sample, is given as this. And so you'll notice that we have lowercase n here, and we have a lowercase n here, and a lowercase n here. Essentially, in terms of what we're going to need to know, we're going to need to know n, which is the number of data that you are finding the standard deviation for. So if it's a set of 20 data, then we'll know n. So n is a very easy thing to find. The other two things that we're going to need to know are, and this is a difference here, we say sigma of x squared, where x represents our data values, okay? So really what we're saying here is when we say sigma x squared, when we write sigma x squared, let's give this a name, sigma x squared, this is the sum of squared data. So essentially what we're going to do to use this formula is we are going to take all the original data and we're going to square those suckers and we should have that data. We'll, we'll sum those squared values. And then the last thing we need is the sum of x here. You notice that the, the parentheses are on the outside of the sum of x or the sum of our data and we're going to square all that. So when we write this, when we write the sum of the data and square it, this is the, the, it's supposed to be an arrow here, the sum of data squared. Okay, so the primary difference, and this is it, this is all the only three values we need to know here, and I'll show you how this is really quickly put together with this data over here, but essentially, the only three things we need to know are how many data there were, and the difference between these two would be this. One is we square the data and then sum it, but sum it, excuse me, so the sum of the squared data, and then the other one is we sum the data, then square that number. There's a difference between doing it in those two orders. So the sum of the squared data and the sum of the data, then squared. Okay, uh, and there is a difference between that. So here's our formula. Essentially, if we want to find the variance for a sample uh, of data, we're going to say the number of data times the sum of the squared data minus the sum of the data squared, and then this is all over the number of data times one less than the number of data. Okay, so now when you look at your standard deviation formula here, I just want everybody to notice that instead of s squared, we have just s. And recall this is because the standard deviation is the square root of the variance, and so the square root of s squared is just s. And likewise, when you look at this formula here, I hope you notice that it's just all of this stuff living under the square root roof, okay? So what this means is you guys need to know how to find the variance, and then if you want the standard deviation, then we'll just take the square root of it. So the variance is really all I need to worry about, and I need to know how to find these three values right here. Okay, so really quickly, we're gonna you know digress here, or at least uh, diverge down here to the shortcut formula for the sigma squared and sigma, or variance and standard deviation of a population. And what I want everybody to notice is this: well, first of all, we're using Greek letters instead of Roman letters because we're talking about a population or a, uh, a statistic for a whole population, which is called a parameter. And instead of using lowercase n's, of course, we use capital n's to indicate this isn't just the number of data; it's the number of data for an entire population. Okay, so last but not least, uh, what I want everybody else to notice is this. In the denominators up here, we have n times n minus 1, whereas down here we have n times itself, which is a really big difference. And I don't mean like a mathematical difference. I mean, that's pretty significant. Okay, so why do we do this? And then I'll go ahead and go over here and use these formulas. But why do we divide by n times n minus 1 on a sample standard deviation variance, whereas down here we divide just by n times n? And I want everybody to notice this. The, the smaller the number you divide by, the bigger your answer is. When you talk about a ratio, you know, if I said, you know, what's 
of, I guess, 9 divided by 3 would get 3. But if I said 9 divided by 2, my answer just got slightly larger. The reason why, with a sample, we actually divide by 1 less than the number that we have here uh, on one of the factors is it because it inflates your number slightly. And why is it with a sample that I would want to inflate the average spread of my data? And so what we'll do is here, we'll just kind of try to visualize this here. But let's say I had a data set, you know, my data, or, you know, they're located here. I'm just kind of making this up. And it's spread across this number line. And some of them we have doubled up data. Maybe I have a datum here and a datum here and another one here, another one here. And this is what my data looks like. Okay. I would say, well, just guessing, the average is probably somewhere in here. You know, we say this is the whole population. This is our mean, mu. Uh, and so what we want to do is find the average spread. And you'll notice that I have things that are, you know, kind of located really far away from the average. They're not very typical. These are what we call outliers out here. But because of this, the average spread might be something like this. And so our standard deviation for the population might look like that, you know, sigma units this way and sigma units this way on average. But the idea is, what if we were to grab now a sample of data from the population? That is, the population is pretty big, even though this isn't very big. And maybe I grab this person and I grab this person, this person, this person. You know, they were common, this person. And there's my sample now. Okay, so the average might still be somewhere around what the true average of everybody is. It might be in here somewhere. Of course, we would call this x bar using Roman letters instead of mu because x bar represents the average of our data. But you'll notice that the standard deviation in this case would be very small. Our data is on average packed very closely to the mean. So our s, our lowercase s values, or our standard deviations are going to be really small. So if we want our sample data to help describe the population, because remember, that's what we do a lot of time in statistics. We look at a smaller sample and use that to make inferences about a, a population as a whole. Then what we're going to need to admit is, well, likely we might get something that's really close in average, which we see here. But the standard deviations won't probably be the same because we say that the sample is biased. Okay. So when you see this n times n minus 1, we're going to give that a name. But it is called the unbiased estimator. of the mean. Okay, so we're trying to unbias our sample a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a look at our example that I've got over here. It says find the sample variance and standard deviation. So basically let's find the variance uh, and then find the standard deviation but for the amount of European auto sales for a sample of six years shown and we'll say that these are in like millions of dollars here. So the first thing I want everybody to notice here is that we're talking about a sample. All right. So since I'm talking about a sample, we're going to be using this first set of formulas up here and really just this first one up here. So my advice is, you know, everybody could have skipped this part of the video if you just want to see the formula in practice. But there are three things we need. And I say always make this grocery list. The first one is this. What is the sum of our data? So when we talk about the sum of our data, all we need to do is grab a calculator and add all these up. This is a very easy thing to do. So we say 11.2 plus 12 plus uh, 11.9, I kind of skipped that one there, plus 12.8, so 12.8 plus 13.4 plus 14.3, boom. So we get 75.6. So the sum of our data is 75.6. This is great news, as a matter of fact, because once we have this, we have one third of the information we need. As a matter of fact, that's the number that's going to go boom right there in our formula. So now the second thing I want is the sum of the squared data. So I'm always going to recommend to people that what you do first is you take all this data, add it together, and then go back and square your data. So for instance, 11.2, we square this, we get 125.44, I believe is what we just had there. Uh, when we square 11.9, so we get 11.9, square it, 141.66. I'm going to try to write this sideways here. 141.66, this squared is going to be 144. When we square 12.8, 12.8 squared, 163.84. So I'm going to write this above, actually, 163. 0.84, and I really do write this right next to the data when I do these things. And we say, okay, so 13.4 squared, we'll clear this, it's 13.4 squared. 179.56, so 179.56, that'll go here. And then 14.3, last but not least, 14.3, so 14.3 squared it, we get 204.49. So here's what we want to do. 
we want to find the sum of the squares of the individual data values. So we're going to take all these squared numbers and add them up. So symbolically speaking, we're saying we are taking the sum of our data that's been squared already. Okay, That's different from the sum of the squared data. So we say, what's the sum of our squared data? We get this, 125.44 plus 141.61 plus 144, plus 163.84, plus 179.56, plus 204.49. We get 958.9498.94. So in terms of what we need for our formula, I just want to point this out here. We have the sum of our data. That's going to go in this little bubble. We have the sum of our squared data, that's going to go in this first little portion, and then all we need left is n, and we're going to use a lowercase n because we used a sample data. And I looked 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So once we have all of these values here, and I say, let's just go put them into the formula and then solve. Oh man, this is super easy, I'm telling you. So we say s squared is really this with the number of data times, now the sum of our squared data minus the sum of our data squared, and this is all over times n times n minus 1, pardon me. So what we're going to do is we're just going to place in our numbers here. And I always say, let's start with n. We get 6, 6, and 6 here. Those are all our n values. And in terms of the only two numbers I need to know to put up here last are going to be these. Either 75.6 or 958.94 in this order. And what I can tell you is this. When you talk about variance, you're talking about what's the average squared distance to the mean. Since it's a squared value, it has to come out to be positive. So in terms of if you can't remember which value goes where, always put the bigger number first. But when you look at your formula, you say, okay, well, the sum of our squared data was this value right here, and it's 958.94. So 958.94. And then over here, we're going to put 75.6. So now, this is going to require some calculator savviness. Uh, but basically, on the top, let's go ahead and get our top value in the numerator. But we get 6 times 958.94. Enter. So this number right here is just this quantity, and we're going to subtract off 75.6 squared. So I'm going to store this in the memory just in case I lose it. But we say minus, in parentheses, 75.6, square that, in parenthesis, equals. So on top, we get this right here. We get 38.28. And I just want to check this again. If I bring out the memory value, and I say minus, in parentheses, 75.6 squared, in parenthesis, take that off, we get 38.28. So I get 38.28, and this is all over 6 times 5, which is 30. So when we divide this out, we're going to say this divided by 30 is 1.276. So we say, without rounding right now, we say 1.276. I'm going to make a little note here. This is our variance, 1.276 squared million dollars or million squared dollars, whatever how you want to refer to it. It's not very sensible until you do this, which is go find s. Which recall, s is the standard deviation, and it's just the square root of the number we just found right here. So I'm going to go ahead and place in this 1.276, and this is a good reason for never erasing this number off your calculator, because now I can just hit square root button, and I get 1.13-ish. Now I notice my original data went out to the nearest tenth, we want to go one extra place value, so that's why I'm saying 1.13. And we're going to label this. We say 1.13 million dollars. So if you were to look at this set of data up here and go find the average, and I don't know what the average is. We could add them all up and divide by however many there are. As a matter of fact, we could just say we already did add all them up. 75.6 divided by 6. So on average, their annual sales are about 12.6 million dollars, but what this is saying is uh, give or take $1.13 million above or below that on average. Data lies within, on average, $1.13 million of this. Okay, cheers.